All right. Good evening and welcome to the first post-Thanksgiving Sunderland Select Board meeting. We're very, they had a good uh, and safe holiday. Um, tonight on our agenda, we have our re, uh, continued tax classification hearing um, from last week. And we have a discussion about a sewer connection again for 170 Old Amherst Road. We have got our COVID-19 update. We've got a discussion about the employee wage adjustment and COAs, uh, and then any select board and town administrator updates. So <clears throat> with that, thanks for uh, our Teresa and the assessors, board of assessors coming tonight to talk about tax classification, our annual discussion about it. So what do you got? Hopefully we're gonna do a screen share. Oh, great. <laughs> so I can do the PowerPoint. Okay. So here it goes. If it doesn't work, well, from well, there. We'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, here we go. And uh, Jeff, do you need to pass her the ball? Uh, I think so. Hmm. Not. Do you want to email it to me, Teresa? I guess so. Why? It's like it says share your screen, yep. your entire screen, but it's not coming up. Uh, any idea why? Uh, you want, can you try maybe sharing just like the at? Like, is it PowerPoint? Try to share sharing it's PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Yeah, okay. try that. See if that works. Just the app. Application window. Hmm. I don't know why it's not. Well, it's it's not showing my PowerPoint. So yeah, maybe uh, if I can email it to Jeff, then he can. Uh, yeah, he can do that. We'll, we'll do. We'll do the we'll, minutes. We'll do that. Okay, we'll do that. While you're doing that. We have a. Um, I'm just oh, checking them out right now. Yeah. Uh, I'll move to approve the minutes as presented. Okay. I'll uh, second. All those in favor of the minutes from last week, the November 23rd? Aye. Aye. All right. Two to zero. And I should point out that uh, one of our members is absent there. Tom is unfortunately detained at work. So. I'll not be here tonight, so it'll just be Scott and I. <clears throat> okay. We're going to run amok. That's right. We're going to set tax rates. We're going to close right. roads. It's going to be credible. And, and sign all sorts of tasks to I'm, come. You know, when you're not here, you know what happens. <laughs> love it. Uh, okay, so I emailed it to Jeff. I'm not sure if Jeff's okay. got it. Okay. Oh, there we go. Bam. Bam. Okay. All right. I guess start the slideshow and I'll try to keep up. <laughs> do, do, do. All right. The floor is yours, Teresa. Okay. So welcome to the fiscal year 2021 classification hearing. And I prepared this. So, and we have our beautiful town here. So we can move to the next slide. Just hit enter. Yeah. Okay, so what is the purpose of the classification hearing? Enter. So Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 56 allows a shift in the tax burden between property classes. This does not change the total tax levy for the community. It simply determines the share to be borne by each class. Shifting the burden. The share of the levy for the commercial, industrial, and personal property classes, otherwise known as the CIP, may be increased by up to 50% if the re residential and open space, otherwise known as RO, classes raise at least 65% of what they would have raised without the shift. Approximately 30% of cities and towns have split rates. And as we've discussed in previous years, those are basically towns and cities that have some sort of power generation facilities or a large um, commercial industrial base, but we 
do not qualify for that typically. And we'll get into that in future slides coming up. Okay. So the overview of the revaluation and classification process. So every five years, assessments must be at 100% fair market value certified and audited by Mass Department of Revenue. The Municipal Modernization Act signed August 9, 2016 by Governor Baker increased, is increasing this from three to five years. It used to be every three, now it's every five. So Sunderland's next revaluation is set for 2020, 20, 2022. Okay, and every year assessors must make interim adjustments to be at 100% fair market value certified by Mass Department of Revenue. Okay, now we have our four classes of property, the residential, commercial, industrial, and personal property. And these are some examples of properties in town. Personal property are the contents of the business, um, put it simply. Okay, and here we have a graph that I've been making every year. It's the average value of trends by fiscal year. So this is the five year trend and I have each class, residential, commercial, industrial, and personal property indicated by a different color bar. So it's, it's not a huge difference from year to year, but you can see from 2017 to 2021, there's a pretty significant um, increase in personal property and a slight increase in the residential class. And the residential class has slowly been increasing due to the market, it's basically a seller's market. So the prices are going up, the values go up. And the personal property increased quite a bit, mostly due to NSTAR solar facility. So you can see between the five years, it's the, that value has gone up quite a bit, which is good for the town. Okay. All right, so here's our summary. Residential and personal property mm -hmm. classes are the most growth with a 2.11% total growth across all classes. The total to be raised went up 3.26%. The tax levy went up 2.44%. So the proposed tax rate for fiscal 21 is 1549. The proposed water district fiscal 21 rate is 57 cents. The average value of residential property in Sunderland went up just 0.3%. So we have examples of uh, properties in 2020 and 21. Uh, the average residential value of a home in town uh, last year was 200,099,100 dollars and the taxes were 4,618.20. Now the average in 21 is 299,937 and the proposed taxes would be 46,46,02, which is basically an increase of $27.81 for that home. So factors which kept the rate low. Well, we had an increase in growth due to new homes renovations and our new apartment complex. And the total estimated receipts were up 4.48%. Uh, it should be noted that the full value for the North 116 flats won't be realized until fiscal 2022, as it was not complete as, as of January 1st, 2020. So just a note, all properties are valued based on what existed on January 1st of that year. So that's why we can't value it yet, but in it's January coming up, it'll get its full valuation. So that's a lot of questions that people ask all the time is when are we gonna see the value of that property? Well, it will be coming and it's gonna come in January. So we will see that reflected in next year's tax information, okay? And here we have the impact of splitting the rate on the average property. <clears throat> so I took a simple average of all the residential, commercial, and industrial properties just to give you a baseline. And then we have no split, so that's taxes at 100%. And then we have a 90% shift, an 85% shift, a 75% shift, and a 65% shift. So I'm not gonna read all the numbers, but basically <clears throat> you do a residential home at 100%, it's the taxes for that home would be 4646. If you go all the way to the, as you go down the columns to the lower shift, the amount that the residential pays is reduced, but the amount that the industrial 
uh, goes up is increased, and it looks like I left off a digit on this very last one. That should be like uh, another zero at the end. But basically, you can see that the taxes for commercial and industrial would be grossly in proportion if we did a split. So the assessors recommend uh, a single tax rate, which is what we've done every other year, um, because it doesn't make sense for our town to split. It makes sense to keep a single tax rate so that the taxes are the same rate for all the properties and it's more equitable. It would put an unfair burden on the commercial and industry to split it. Okay. And then this is our historic tax rate. So this is interesting because here we are at our, oh, let's somehow it got cut off, but on the bottom, I don't know if you can make that go up, Jeff. Uh, it's past 2021, or are you not seeing yeah. 2021? I'm not, I'm not seeing 2021. I don't know if anybody else oh, yeah. is. Yeah, yeah well, okay, I there we go. Yeah. All right, so the main thing to look at is look back in 96, yeah. um, the tax rate was 1550, and now we're proposing 1549. So in 25 years, we've kind of gone up, gone down, and now we're back to where we were 25 years ago with the tax rate. And if you look at and 98, it too, it was even higher. Yes, yes. Yeah. So it definitely was higher than it is now. It also has been lower, but yeah. it's not out of line with what we've had in the water district is similar. They've been around 50 to 60 cents all along. So their proposal is 57 cents. We're 1549 and it's not final until DOR approves it. But this is based on our figures. These are the rates. And so uh, basically the, we have to Get the feeling of the selectmen uh, based on the board's recommendation of the single tax rate. Once that has been voted on, then I can go ahead and enter all the documents um, into Gateway or complete entering them and sign them off on them and submit them. And then hopefully we get an approval quickly so then we can turn around and get our tax bills sent out. And that is the end of my presentation. Right. Anybody have any questions for Teresa and the uh, the board of assessors before we roll along? <laughs> and I was thinking, as you look at the span of time, too, you probably have to keep in mind two different items over the years that have, uh, like, debt items, like debt exclusion, things that have gone on and off over time, too. That probably causes some of the fluctuation. It does. Airport. Yeah. yeah. Because you, you don't necessarily see that, but <clears throat> and that happens a lot over over the course of time. So, <clears throat> and um, we haven't seen any really significant changes, obviously, in the the, the demographics of the town. So, no. you know, it's not like we it's suddenly had a, little bit. a lot of industry popping up or anything. So, no. It's pretty steady, you know, the class right. is staying about the same. The only big difference was is when we got NSTAR solar facility, that added quite a bit. Yeah, and that's is, the one down near Bubs, if anybody's uh, right. wondering which one that is. <clears throat> Correct. And uh, a lot of questions I've been getting is what's going to happen with the values because of the pandemic. Well, we're not going to really know that until next year. But I can tell you this, that looking at the deeds – starting from the beginning of January of 2020, Sunderland's properties have been selling way over assessed value. So it's clearly a seller's market. Properties are going for more. So that may may or may not cause the values across the town to go up. Based, there's a lot of analysis that needs to be done, but um, it has not impacted our values in town. They have not plummeted by any means. Everybody wants their values high for selling, but low for taxes, right? So that's always, yeah. the, that's always the way. Yeah. That's, that's the game. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> that's right. Well, Teresa, yeah, thanks I, so much. I, for I, I agree with Teresa. Um, we have seen at least a 20% increase in, in sales compared to assessed value. So it is a seller's market during this COVID-19 um, pandemic we have. So. Well, one thing that's happening is if you look at 
if you look at who's buying, there are there are there is a portion of um, the buyers that are coming from either out of state or in a more metropolitan area, and they wanna they wanna get in on our market here. That's right. Yep. <clears throat> It hasn't seemed to, I was hoping it hasn't seemed to have cooled it off. So, mm. all right. Well, thanks for your, the presentation. We appreciate it, all the effort that goes into that and everything in the board. Okay. All right. So, I think we uh, have to take a vote on this, right? It'll be I'll the usual to, course of action. Yeah. Move to accept the recommendation, two recommendations one for a single tax, single rate. That's item number one. And then item number two, the rate as being presented of $15.49 for the town and $0.57 cents for the water district. All right. And in light of Tom not being here, I'll second. Uh, all those in favor of the rates as presented? Aye. Aye. Thank you for your work over these last years. We're not going to get one from you next year. I know. That's too bad. No. We'll miss you. We appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. I'm sure the board will miss that too. So, you know. Absolutely will. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Well, thanks for calling in, you guys. We okay. appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Yep. All right. <clears throat> so, next up, we have our sewer connection request for 170 Old Amherst Road, which we were discussing earlier. And, and uh, <clears throat> Do you want to bring anything up, Jeff? Any visuals for it at all? Um, sure. So you had asked, um, I think, to see, understand what was happening with the building permit and the plumbing. Yep. Um, and, and we have Mr. West, um, who I think is do, do, doing the plumbing connection. Is that right? No, uh, Timmy Keats of Plumbing is going to be doing the actual plumbing connection. I'm going to do the connection from the street to the foundation. Okay. Um, and we just... So this is oh, there we uh, go. the first floor, first floor. plan. Um, got one bedroom, bathroom, laundry, kitchen. And and for folks who don't know the location, this is right down on Old Amherst Road, kind of near uh, 116, right near that um, little stream that goes through there. Whoop. This second there it is. floor um, has four bedrooms and a bath <laughs> on that. So it's a five bedroom residence. Yep. And was it one and a half? I could pull up or two. Sorry, I missed that on the first floor. Uh, is it? Are you looking at the first floor now? Yep. Yeah, and I see it now. Okay. Yeah, so yep. there's the bathroom like a bathroom there. Yeah. And the laundry hookup. So one and yeah, one and three quarters or whatever. Or were they referring to that? Right. Camera <clears throat> stall. Yeah. Did you want me to pull up the, the plumbing? Second yeah, floor, please, Jeff. This, oh, and Scott wants to see the second. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Got it. Thank you. Yep. And this is, this is what I had. Two toilets, washing machine, water heater, bathtub, dishwasher, kitchen sink, and then two, two bathroom sinks. We go back to the uh, site work with the uh, invert and the recommendation from the uh, wastewater treatment operator. Yep. So, it's probably that one above it, I think. Uh, did you uh, did you want to see the? I'm sorry, the site plan. Uh, the invert showed the elevations. Yeah, that's in here somewhere. Yeah, one of those pages. In there. Next one. Do, 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 do. 
So hey, again, there we go. Only so I'll pipe in for can you rotate counterclockwise so I don't have to turn my head. Hey, <laughs> thank you. There you go. You can just pick up your laptop and spin it, right? So pitch is approved and our invert drill through existing manhole, right? Non-shrink grout. So we're dumping into a, into a manhole that has an outflow as part of the system. Is that correct? Yes. You're not tapping a pipe or anything? No, we're not tapping the pipe. Um, the wastewater treatment plant operator said that he would rather us come into the riser and just yep. use hydraulic cement to patch the hole. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Okay, so the only area of concern that I have is not, won't hold up in any way this part of the application. The highway superintendent's asking for compaction at each of the, each of the, each elevation in when you fill it in. So yeah, yeah, we got that email. It's going to be uh, every foot we're going to compact with a, uh, a mechanical compactor. And then at the top, we are going to match the existing thickness of the asphalt to make sure that you guys have a nice smooth road surface after. Okay. Thank you for that. So it's a little late in the game for this part of the discussion, but a five bedroom uh, set up as, hang on, let me back up. So we do sewer connections by fixtures, number of fixtures, right? That's just the way it is. The building permit process showed, uh, could have shown this as, um, not a single family house. It doesn't look like it's designed to be a single family house, although it could end up being that way based on the, the market as a rental. I completely understand it. It's not our yep. position to say, but I do think in the future, we should have a more comprehensive look at the building part. As it seems to me now, we're not quite forced to, we have all our recommendations, but the line of questioning about total number of occupants and total volume. So we're short here, even with the number of fixtures, that could be a 10 person occupancy, right? Five bedrooms, two persons per. Again, this is, this is outside of the range of the sewer connection. So I think in the building side, if I could, Jeff, make a recommendation that we, we investigate how to take, we investigate, we explore how to look at, um, a sewer connection like this from the building permit forward. Because yeah, you have higher effluent from this right. than a regular right. exactly. single so family. If number of fixtures is going to be based on the total flow is going to be based on a number of fixtures. Not that you have to have a, fi a fixture per individual or a fixture per occupant, but it's pretty clear this is designed on the surface to be a little more communal and it may be a little higher volume. We don't measure uh, effluent as a, as a volumetrically. We only get one look at it at the time of application. So that's that's the line of thought I'd like to just put out there for an uh, area for exploration uh, going into next year. Beyond that, we've got a recommendation from the treatment plan operator and from the highway superintendent, and I'd, I'd move to approve the connection. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and uh, I'll second for approval. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then hopefully we'll get lucky and the uh, asphalt plant will still be open. You know, keep our fingers crossed with the weather. That'd so, be great. Yeah. Seems like it, uh, it's going to be a long season so far anyway. Who knows, though? I hope so. Yeah. We could use it. Yeah, I bet. All right. Thank you. Thanks for Thank coming. You. Thanks. Have a good one. All right. You too. All right. Next up, we've got our weekly COVID state of emergency update. And I saw Laura. There's Laurie out there. Hey, EMD. How Hello. are you? Good. How are you? All Thanks. right. That's good. Any, any new updates? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> the 25th, I was notified of three new positive cases. And today, I was notified of two new positive cases and one close contact. Ah. So How, that brings our total for the month to 26. 26. Does it change our color rating at all? Or are we still, I think we're green right now? We're yellow. yellow. We're yellow? Okay. Yellow. Yeah. Um, I think uh, 
The Board of Health Chair mentioned last week that seven were coming off uh, as of Sunday. So we have yeah. five coming on. We still have a couple more days. So yeah. I, I don't be. know that that the report on Thursday is the needle is going to move much. Yep. Yeah. Well, that I mean, given in light of the the massive rise in cases nationally, I, that's good. I guess you know it's a probably about as good as we can expect. So, yes. I think, and it will probably be a little while before we see um, the effects. Any of effects? It, exactly right. And we we don't yeah. we don't test for anything in our wastewater system here, so we're not like UMass or something like that. So we can't gauge that way. But right. Um, We'll so if I could, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Uh, Lori, what, what's what's tipping point before there are actionable items, right? We're reported to have 26 with maybe some coming on and off, right? It's a kind of a line change. It's a hockey season too. It's like line change, seven on, yeah. five on, <laughs> yeah. seven on, six off. Three. Yeah. What, what's, a, what's a tipping point where there's action besides uh, continuing to communicate to the public? the benefits of mask wearing, social distancing, you know, putting on my Anthony Fauci hat right now and saying, yeah. get your gloves, do right. your sanitizer, be smart about it, you know, wear your mask, wear your mask these. you know, don't, don't go to, don't go to a house party with 50 other people that you don't know, keep your circle right. small with 26 in the town of 3,700. Where is there a tipping point where some other level of action becomes um, a recommended? I think it's it's every two weeks is the reporting. Yep. And it's it's 25 during that one period of time mm -hmm. when it becomes the tip. Got it. So okay. from an EMD's perspective, what what, is, what does that end up meaning? Right? We haven't had a we haven't had to generate a response yet. We have to generate an awareness. Right. Um, uh, signboards in the center of town again. Yep. you know, reminding people of safe practices. Um, you might think about going back to nobody in the town hall again, you mm -hmm. know, point, yep. not even appointment only, um, you know, shutting down the buildings that way. Mm -hmm. And it's, and I think it's a, it's a more of a week to week rather than a month to month thing too going forward because right. of the way that the state tracks things now. Okay. And well, I think we, it's important to have that, you know, binder dusted off to know what we're supposed to do getting to a certain point. Mm -hmm. Great. Especially Thank you. Yeah, I will do that research. And, you know, we're rolling into right from Thanksgiving into Christmas, too. So, and my and fear is, if, yeah, and, and New Year's, right. And if we have a bump up from Thanksgiving and then people moving around at Christmas, you know, hopefully... <clears throat> Yeah. I know vaccines are on the horizon, but it won't be till next year sometime. So, yeah. So it's important to bear in mind those personal steps that can be taken, right? We don't want right. a heavy handed government. That's nice. You can't, you can't shoot COVID with your gun. It doesn't work that way. You know, all that stuff. So masks, hand washing, distancing. And there's a little a number that I, I was struck by hearing on uh, the Sunday uh, news shows. United States represents 4% of the total global population. That's four. We're 350 odd million out of, you know, nearly 7 billion. But we have 19% yeah. <laughs> of the recorded fatalities related yep. to COVID in the entire planet. So obviously we're excelling yeah. really, really good at this. <laughs> you know, we're, we're so tired of winning that we're dying to do it. That's right. I say that with every bit of sarcasm. So be smart. Well, yeah, just wear your masks. Don't yell at me when I'm wearing mine. Wash your hands. Be smart about your bubbles. Shop remotely if you can. Just be smart. There. That's the end of my soapbox. Oh, it's a great soapbox. Yep, it is. <clears throat> All right. Um, anything from the town? Actually, and that, the, when we were talking earlier, that kind of made me question. Um, how many How many folks have we do you know who we had appointments like in the last week, Jeff? Just bulk. Any idea? Um, no, not, uh, not, a, I'd say a handful. Okay. Um, no, nobody came into my office. I think there may have been one or two people that 
went to see the the clerk um and and maybe one or two that saw the treasurer collector um and and okay. board of health i think but that you know okay i'd say maybe two people uh were the most in a, in a given day as far okay. as visitors and i know the school is keeping on top of things too in their meetings so as well as the library as well as the library safety. that's right yep, yep. everybody's yep. been been busy yep so well, let's um, keep let's keep being vigilant and uh thank you Lori, yep. for the update appreciate it You're welcome Bring us, back as, bring us back a zero next time. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to do that. <laughs> I know, right? Yes. Get back to where we were in like May or June or wherever it was. Yep. Yes. Uh, How is our stockpile of PPE if we have to do something for public safety, if we have to do something that is a uh, mass distribution or mass testing? I know that the police department was given a supply of masks. Um, they had to go pick them up in Greenfield Yep. And they were to hand out to the public, actually, mm -hmm. um, for folks that didn't have a mask when they happened to be stopped for something. Mm -hmm. um, but I haven't checked with the fire department and police department. That's on my list. Can we have that for next week, just in case yep. this, you know, goes south and we've got to do, we've yep. got to do something Prepare. that's townwide. Will do. Thank you. And Jeff, the COG is still operating as a semi-distributor in there, right? Not no, anymore. they stopped doing that. Yeah. Yeah, but the, there are statewide contracts Great. Um, that we can take advantage of without procurement. Okay. Excellent. So a, need, a needs analysis based on uh, a large distribution model might be helpful. Yep. Okay. Great. Thank you. Good to be prepared and hopefully we'll never need it. No, hopefully you, you have a, a five-year shelf life and you have the materials that you need when you need them as opposed right. to begging for them when you need them and you don't have them. Exactly. It's just plain and simple. No scrambling. Exactly. All right. All right. Thanks, Laurie. You're welcome. See you next week. Yes, you will. <laughs> uh, all right. So next up is our discussion about employee wage adjustments and COLAs. So we're at the point now where we, in that process where we've got to make a decision for whether we institute the ones that we appropriated and voted for and everything. So how so are we Jeff, looking up? Your document in front of us has got a revenue forecast where we projected 20% reduction in state aid that, that that has not manifested where we're a little lower but not not quite whole but certainly not 20% and that's that's helpful based on that's the governor's cherry sheet jeff uh governor's house and senate are all within several thousand dollars um for state aid okay. and close. education aid Okay, and our our uh, receipts received are running. You said, or was, it was said in a prior meeting, in the in the ninety percent range Correct. of estimates. Yep. Okay. Uh, th those were tax receipts. Tax yeah, receipts. Right. It was the unknown was the local receipts, right? Right. Right, which includes vehicle yeah. excise, so right. some taxes, but uh, that was real estate. Yep. Right, and. And we budgeted based on a 5% decrease of local receipts. Correct. So our revenues were projecting an impact from the state and a lesser impact from uh, the, our, our, own, um, our own receipts. And our personnel committee has recommended that 2%, David? Yes. And that 2%, uh, Jeff equates to, I'm trying to read right here, so my, I'm on camera, which I have off my own screen right now. If I look goofy, it's because I'm trying to read. Um, and I look goofy. That's arts letter amount wages. So a total budgetary impact that the town appropriated of 35,054.33 would pay for the personnel committee's recommendation and what was appropriated at annual town meeting. The board's position was to wait and see what we had for revenues. And what I'm hearing is our revenues are going to be higher than our estimate. Uh, and we're running to the end of the calendar year here. 
with respect to paying uh, in the calendar year, which is, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. for this, 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 this calendar year, which is payroll year. Right. right. Also, this would trigger um, our, our reopening clause with the police. And it's important to bear in mind the police, and I want to thank them for, thank the union for working with the town uh, for a zero increase unless um, the reopening clause was triggered, which is an old holdover in the contract for uh, COLAs exceeding their own. Uh, and this would clearly trigger that. So Jeff, that could add as much as another 10,000, correct? Yeah, about that, yep. So uh, Mr. Chair, if we do this, this, this 2% COLA for the current year for non-negotiated and then do the reopener recognizing that we know we're going to pay the police likely at least uh, the same percentage. We're looking at an addition of 46 plus thousand dollars to the operating expenses. It's important to bear in mind it's baked in the expense budget and we think we now have we're confident in the available revenues. Yep. So this is not an increase in the expense, but it's the new zero for next year. Right. New baseline. I capture that correctly, Jeff? Yeah. And ju just to clarify, that's with both the wage adjustment and the 2% COLA plus, um, the you know, the, the estimate of what the police negotiation would be. That's around the right. 46,000. Yeah. Right. Right. Now that I can see everybody, I'm not pointing at the screen and then pointing at the notes. <laughs> Numbers, yeah. uh, um, well, you know, we, we have been patient and I think um, persistent in our, in our persistently patient to get uh, good information. And by all accounts with a state Senate, state house and governor's budget kind of aligning toward a cherry sheet value um, that this may well be the year to be able to execute this uh, recommendation. At the same time, I want to remind everyone who's watching or may watch in the future that our rep and senator were on a couple of weeks ago, you know, just warning about 22. That yeah. that is that is going to be, uh, I think uh, Senator Comerford said a heavy lift. So if we have this available in the current year, recognizing that it was baked into the expense budget, um, then I'm, I'm for uh, twofold motion, Mr. Chair, that okay. is to uh, go ahead and, and I wanna do this for discussion. Mm. Go ahead and execute the personnel committee's recommendation based on the revenue forecast that we have for non-union. Yep. Second part of the motion is to have the board reach out to uh, the police union in the morning and have the town request for the reopener. Okay. Oh, I'll second for discussion. Uh, two things. The first is by asking the town to request for the reopener. It shows uh, more than good faith negotiating on the town's part. And hopefully that goodwill be continued to be recognized by the union. Uh, second piece is um, we have to send a note to the personnel committee uh, recognizing that um, how difficult that this has been and this is really awkward, appropriating without expending and now expending mid-year. Yep. Uh, we have a burden that we're adding to the treasure collector for basically you know, paying in the rears people and their benefits. And this is a layer of complexity. I want to thank Heather for the work she's about to do. <laughs> yeah. Yes, thank you in advance. <laughs> it's one of a continuing trend of an awkward year. Right. So those are my motions and discussions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. And any other input at all, Jeff, or just want to make sure we go? No, I, I think that, okay. that, that that was summarized nicely. And, um, you know, the, the only 
point that I'd make is that it, it is a point of negotiation what that actual uh, outcome is with the police. So, right. Um, right. So the estimate from our we're point. estimating that it's good. It's going to be close to what non-union is um, getting, which is two percent, or was recommended for. Um, but it's a negotiation. So. Well, in, in our negotiation, one of the things that was important was the structure. Remember, um, multi-year was early discussion, but with a level of uncertainty, we went for one, knowing that we starting all over again in February or March. Right. Yep. Okay, thank you. All right. And then, and also too, like from the, I'll put on my personnel committee hat for a second too, like that this enabling of these kind of completes the, the bulk of what we were trying to do with the personnel committee in terms of bringing us up on a level with our peer town. So <clears throat> that was one of the big, one of the big things. So, all right. All right. Uh, I'll, well, actually I've already seconded. So uh, yeah. I'll take a vote on that. All those in favor of the uh, motions recommended. Aye. Aye. All right. With that, we have select board updates. There I am. Hey. Uh, the only one I have, Mr. Chair, obviously we'll be uh, sending an opener letter to the police union, so I expect those right. meetings to start in short order. Uh, uh, also, it is December, I want to say 2nd. I have to look at my, my inbox on this machine, but I'm pretty sure we have a Frontier Capital Planning Committee on the 2nd. It's I think second, you're right. It's second, think, second or third. I think it's the second, yeah. like four o'clock or something like that. It, it is, yeah. Yep. It has to do with um, the yearly update, but also primarily driven about the track um, and the progress on the track at, this, at the uh, frontier. Oh, okay. And I have a personnel committee meeting tomorrow night on a, on a well, different have, topic. Bring so. them happy news. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, I think that's all I have. For that so um we'll turn it over to jeff for town administrator updates yeah just, uh uh two brief things maybe three um one is there is a box at the police station they're doing toys for tots so nice everybody's nice. um feeling generous this season um there there is a box there the Second is that the um, recreation department is doing a bright lights over Sunderland uh, yep. campaign to add some cheer to the community. Um, and so people are invited to the application forms on the website. Uh, people are invited to uh, decorate their homes with lights and their categories for traditional holiday themes. It sounds like the most lights you can get on a house wins an award. Uh, it, inflatables and then lighted lawn figures. And um, the, I think the prizes were generously donated by local businesses. Oh, nice. Um, so there will be some prizes. So we thank them for that. Um, and just something to, to try to bring a little, a little holiday cheer. I think, yeah. Um, so instead of nice instead time. of pouring rain and leaves, yeah, yeah that's right. Soggy leaves Soggy that then leaves. freeze. <laughs> yep, and and I noticed uh, it seems like people are lighting things up for obvious reasons decidedly earlier this year. So this is kind of a nice add-on to that. So nice yeah. lights and display contest. So there you go. Oh, there was sorry. There, um, uh, one other thing was. Um, we submitted uh, our application to become an age-friendly community okay. um, today, and you had signed a, a letter of support, I think in August, and we were waiting, maybe doing a regional thing, and the Council on Aging said, let's just move forward, and, and if there are regional projects, then we'll work together regionally on those, um, but so hopefully okay. stay tuned for, fingers crossed, uh, a positive result on that too. Oh, good. So, is there is there irony or synergy between being a heart healthy, <laughs> age healthy, and a Purple Heart community all in the same community? Good question. It's a lot of signs. Yeah, we're gonna need like a whole board just to put all the signs on. <laughs> right. when you get welcome, to, welcome to Sunderland. Exactly. 
where George would be like, another sign. Where are we going to put it? You know? All right. Jeff, could I ask a question, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Uh, Jeff, can we reach out to the folks on uh, who have had interactive uh, speed signs, radar signs uh, for the last well, quarter or so and get feedback from the police and from the residents uh, about how they're uh, positively or not positively impacting the traffic patterns? And then uh, ask uh, the chief and or uh, highway superintendent uh, where the next locations for those signs are. We have them scattered across the community for periods of time to try to enforce behavior. I know there's one up on Falls Road and I wanna make sure that if, if it's not having an impact that you know, we find subsequent ways to help slow down traffic, whether it's mechanical or tables or whatever. Well, it's funny you mention that because I was actually, I was just about to roll into a topic on that when we were down doing the site visit on um, Silver Lane. There was a lot of discussion about the, the traffic there. And we may be able to put to get another sign that we can, you know, that's one of the spots that people have been complaining about really driving fast along. There you so go. so yeah. I don't, we want to, I guess, piggybacking on that, uh, Mr. Chair, is we want to keep it dynamic. We don't want to end up being static and lose exactly. the opportunity to educate across the, across the whole town. And yeah. I believe those signs also allow us to collect um, not just the, the speeds of vehicles. You know, it doesn't identify vehicles or anything like that, but we can get some maybe some useful data out of that, you know, and, and sort of our own little traffic counts in various areas, too. So, sure. so. yeah, and uh, <laughs> I think it was last week I played. Uh, oh, uh, Burkhog Price is Right to learn yeah. about some of the stuff they do. <laughs> and one of the things that they've been doing uh, instead of traffic counts during COVID is actually speed um, speeds speed. on various places. Oh, okay. So that, that's just another tool in the toolbox if we want to uh, use that to determine where it might be a good um, next place to put the signs. That's Right. That's one thing. And then idea, the yeah. other thing is we're looking at getting new variable message signs. And I guess one of the features that can be included in those are um, Radar. speed monitors. Um, yep. And and so they can be more mobile um, speed feedback signs, too. Yep. Ours I don't have the um, radar in them right now. I right. don't believe ours does. Yeah, I think it's just signage. Yeah. Yep. OK. All right. That would be a. Uh... That would be good. Um, nope. No, no, okay. I just said thank you. Yeah. Um, so with that, we do have the public comment section. We kind of reached that point of the evening. I don't know if anybody has any any comments at all. I think everybody's still on a tryptophan coma from the turkey after that. So, all right. I believe that has completed our official business for the evening. With that said, I'll make a motion to adjourn. All right. I'll second. All those in favor for adjourning this week? Aye. Aye. And our next meeting will be next Monday at the same time, 6.30 p.m., keeping our fingers crossed for lower numbers from Thanksgiving. And be it's time smart. for me to stand up mask. and wave again. That's right. Don't leave home without one of these. All right. Thank you.